So today I'm going to show you how to create a Google form and the options that you have with creating a form to use in your classroom. So I want to save this form automatically to my drive. So whenever you see the nine dots or squares here, this is your apps launcher and it just shows you all the applications that they have available. So what you would do is you would click on your apps launcher and we're going to click on drive. Once I get here, again, we're doing Google Forms, so I'm going to click on New. I don't see Forms, so click on More and then Forms. Once I get here, I want to go ahead and title my form now, uh, especially if you're doing a quiz or a poll survey, just so that way you'll be able to find it later. Once you type the name of your form, if you click in the top, it will show the same name that you have here. Where it says description, you can either place directions there or tell what the form is actually about. Okay, so if you notice, it automatically generates a section for untitled question option one. So you have several choices here. Let's start with short answer. So let's say I want a short answer, which would be one to two sentences. So I would type my question. and then the students would be able to type their answer here. Now, just to make sure they don't skip over anything, you would click on required to make sure that they answer it. This lets you to duplicate the slide. Here is where you would delete it. And then these options here gives you uh, different choices for each type of question you choose. So the response validation here, you can have it a certain text, length, expression, greater than, equal to, or less than, and if the answer is incorrect, then you would type a message here that the students would see. So the next question I would want to do is multiple choice. So if you notice that, it brings it down underneath the previous question. Um, I'm sorry, paragraph. So this is what you would do for a longer response. So here they can type up several paragraphs, I'm sorry, type up several sentences into a paragraph form. Again, you can click required. If you click on the three dots, again, you get the response validation. Same thing. Is it a certain length or a certain expression you're looking for? Do you want them to have a certain amount of characters? Um, and then you would put whatever information you would get here. So the next one we'll do will be multiple choice. So with the multiple choice, they only get the option to choose one answer. And sometimes, depending on the type of question, it will go back and change it for you but you can just click back on it again. Okay, and again, if you click on the three dots, 
you can go to a different section based on the answer. So this one is slightly new. So let's say that they actually get this answer correct and your next two set of questions are about full moon. So what you can do is you can say for this answer choice, you want them to go to a different section, click to next section, or you can have them submit the form because now you know this is what they know so there's no need to keep answering more. Okay, after we've done multiple choice, there are check boxes. So with the check boxes, you can actually do several things. You can have more than one answer choice. You can have only one answer choice. Um, or you can have it set to where it will only be a certain amount of choices they can choose. So let's just put a question here. Okay, so I'm going to put in a couple of options here. Okay, so I have six answer choices. I'm going to go to the three dots again because, again, it allows me to have different options. And I want to do response validation. But in this case, I know that four of the answers are correct. So I need them to get exactly four answers. And if they don't get exactly four, I want to enter a text, let them know what it is they're missing. So now, just so you can see what it looks like so far, we're going to remove this because I actually don't need this. We're going to preview it. So if you click on preview, this is what the student will see. What side of the moon is dark during a new moon phase? Okay, what is the difference between waxing and waning? Okay. How much of the full moon is lit? And then here is where we had the student to be able to select multiple answers. So if you notice, I've only clicked one and it immediately tells me I need at least four choices. Now it's not going to say whether their choices are right or wrong, but as soon as I pick four, then it goes away. So we're going to go back to our test key. Okay, so after your check boxes, you have a drop down menu. And this way, the students can actually choose their answers from answers that you're giving in advance. Now, if you're wondering what these dots are on the side, it allows me to actually move the answer choices in a certain order. And again, if you click on the three dots, it gives you different answer choices. 
So you can go to a section based on the answer. So again, if they get it right, you can have them go somewhere else. You can upload a file. You can actually do a scale. The scale is good if you want to get a general idea of, of what they actually know. And you can actually label them as well. Next, we have the multiple choice grid. And I like this because you can do this a couple of ways. You can put a question here and you can have it, uh, the question based off several answers. And you can also limit it to one column. So you can limit the response just to one column itself. Okay, so we're going to go up and preview this so you, again you can see what it actually looks like from the student's point of view. So the question here, this is the linear one, how familiar you are with the moon phases. But then here it says which is more important, you have your columns and your rows. They can do each one, one answer per uh, row. Okay, and you also have the checkbox grid. So let's say you don't want them to bubble, but you want them to have multiple options. And then this last one, you can do date automatically or the time. So let's say you want them to be able to put in a date. But you don't want this question at the bottom. If you click on these dots at the top, you can bring it all the way up. To wherever you would like to place it. And then to add more questions in the order that you'd like, you can go back down to the last block, click on add questions again. And then here we have the time. And if we preview it, it allows them to select the date or they can type it in to AM or PM and then they would just submit. I hope this helps.